The Ghost of Lease Purchase Future, Chapter 6. We landed back in my home, but it was even darker than I remembered, like it had been closed up for some time. There was even dust on the furniture. This was crazy. Emily always kept a clean home. What was going on? All of a sudden, I heard movement. The noise was created by two large men with the words Armando Motel Bongo Moving Company embroidered on their shirts. Hey, Armando, one of the guys yelled. Let's get this piece of junk recliner out of here and into the van. Okay, Armando responded. I bet this was a nice house at one time. Wonder what happened to it. Wait, guys, I yelled. That's my favorite chair. Leave it here. Then I realized they could not see or hear me. I hear that the guy was a lease purchase investor or something, but he fell on hard times. One of those fancy pants investor types. Yes, Armando said he couldn't keep up with the payments and the bank took back his house, car and just about everything. Wow, a real rags to riches to rags story, huh? His partner exclaimed. They lifted the chair. And as they were leaving, Armando said, what's really sad was what happened to the family. Did you hear? With that, the door closed and everything was dark and foreboding again. I turned to the ghouls. Did you hear what he said? What did he mean when he said, did you hear what happened to the family? What did happen to my family? The two somber ghosts opened their cloaks. There was no body or person inside these garments. And as I gazed inside, I saw an old beaten up single wide tra house trailer. One of those really old crummy trailer park places. The trailer had to be at least 50 years old. It was silver dented and had a cheap TV antenna on the roof. It was surrounded by beaten up garbage cans and junk all over the place. It reeked of old garbage. As I continued to watch, I saw my children sitting at the dining room table, but Emily wasn't there, just my two kids. There was a woman who was preparing the food while a man stood next to her. I heard her say, you can call us mom and dad kids. You will be living with us from now on. The children, my kids, had a look of shock on their faces. They were sad, terrified of these strange people. She continued, the state of Washington has made us your foster parents, and it's our job to take care of you. Now eat your tofu and broccoli burgers and then go to your room. Out loud, I whispered, my kids hate tofu and broccoli. Why were my flesh and blood living in a trailer park? What had happened? Where was Emily? The inky dark cloud appeared as soon as I uttered the last words. We were transported to an old crummy hotel in the sleazy part of town. A tired old washed out woman was pushing a squeaky cleaning cart down the hallway. Oh no, it, it can't be. It just can't be, screamed my mind. It was Emily, but she looked like she had aged 30 years. She was hunched over and her face was tired looking. Her hands were as dry looking as the cracked sandy floor of the desert. She looked so sad, so forlorn. This was not my Emily. She was always the happy, positive one. How could I have let this happen? She deserves so much better. I looked at the ghost and asked, what happened? Why is my wife cleaning rooms in this dump of a hotel? Is this why the kids are with another family? The ghost nodded in agreement. You mean she couldn't afford to take care of the kids? Feed them? Keep them in a warm place? I asked. Once again, the ghosts nodded. My voice started to go up in volume as I quickly asked, but why? Why? I could always work and at least feed and house them. Why am I not here to keep my family together, to take care of them? At this point, the ghost created the dark inky cloud again. We traveled to some church grounds. It began to rain and then the wind picked up. Leaves were blowing everywhere. It was so dark and cold. The ghosts of Lease Purchase Future indicated that I should follow. We walked to the back of the church and there was a graveyard. We proceeded to a large burial plot that had recently been dug as evidenced by the fresh layer of dirt on top. There was a blanket or some kind of cover over the gravestone. The ghosts proceeded to remove the blanket slowly. And there was my name and date of demise. Oh, no, I yelled. I can't have died. It's not fair. I'm way too young. What happened? What went wrong? Was I hit by a bus full of nuns? Did I have an accident? The ghosts shook their head in unison. What happened? I pleaded. The ghost threw down a gun. 
Oh, no, I couldn't. I would never do something like that. Why would I do such a thing to myself? I threw myself on the gravesite, crying in hysterical fits, gasping for air, which didn't come fast enough. Eventually, I tried to compose myself, stood up and went right up to the shadowy figures, face to face with the ghouls. No man should see what I have seen this evening, spirits. Please, I want to return home, but I have one last question. Are these the shadow of the things that will be, or are they the shadows of the things that may be? Can these things, these horrible sights that I've seen, be changed? I want my life back, my family. Tell me what to do, spirits. Please tell me, I howled. Then in a blink of an eye, I was returned to my home, my real home. I ran upstairs to make sure I was really back. The kids were all snug in their bed, sound asleep, as well as my lovely Emily. I was home. Everyone was safe again. I was alive. Alive, I tell you. I went downstairs, sat in my chair, and placed my head in my hands. I had to do something to prevent all of this horrible future events that would occur. But what? What could I do to change the future? Was there a way to change the future? All of a sudden, there was a noise, and I lifted my head. <laughs> 